The Great Western Railway 5700-class pannier tanks are one of the most iconic steam locomotive designs. These sturdy and reliable locomotives were built between 1929 and 1950. An astonishing total of 863 were produced. Today we will explore the history, design, performance and legacy of this class of workhorse tank engines. They were primarily designed for shunting and light goods duties, but also used for passenger services on branch, suburban and shorter mainline journeys, particularly in London's suburban areas, where tight curves and space constraints necessitated the need for a powerful, compact and versatile locomotive. In 1922, Charles B. Collett succeeded George Jackson Churchwood as chief mechanical engineer of the Great Western Railway. GWR's tank engine stock was wearing out, the variety of classes was problematic for maintenance and rostering, a new standard design for 060 tanks was needed, which resulted in the 5700 class. A development requirement was to combine a low center of gravity with excellent traction and stability. Inspiration was drawn from previous designs, such as the 2721 class. Early Great Western 060 tank engines were fitted with either saddle tanks wrapped over the boiler or side tanks mounted at the side of the boiler and reaching down to the running platform. The Great Western first fitted pannier tanks mounted on the side of the boiler but not reaching down to the running platform in 1898 to 9440 tank locomotives and in 1901 to 5060 T locomotives which were also fitted with bell pair fireboxes. The shape of the bell pair firebox, a hallmark of GWR locomotive design, gives a larger surface area improving heat transfer and steam production, but their rectangular shape makes them difficult to combine with saddle tanks. Pannier tanks solved this issue. A further advantage being access for maintenance is also easier on a pannier tank than locomotives fitted with side tanks. The first batch of pannier tanks rolled out of Swindon Works in 1929, and production continued until 1950, a total of 863 locomotives built. The series was so successful that it led to the development of several subclasses. Each subclass was tailored to specific operational requirements, but all shared the same basic design principles that made the 5,700-class pannier tanks so successful. The pannier tank's exceptional capabilities were not limited to suburban shunting and freight services. They were also employed in colliery work, dockyards, and even on the challenging gradients of the Welsh valleys, where their excellent traction and stability made them indispensable. In addition, their relatively low axle load allowed them to operate on lightly laid tracks, where larger, more powerful locomotives could not be used. Pannier tanks had a tractive effort of 22,515 pounds. Their top speed was 60 miles per hour, which, while not particularly fast, was sufficient for their intended roles in shunting and local freight operations. The modest speed was more than adequate for the tight curves and limited clearances often encountered in the suburban areas where they primarily operated. The locomotives were equipped with a steam brake, vacuum brake, and screw reverse, which greatly facilitated their shunting duties by enabling precise control during complex manoeuvring operations. Pannier tanks were also occasionally used for passenger train services, showcasing their flexibility. While not suitable for long-distance express services, they were more than adequate for short-haul passenger trains and branch line operations. In some cases, the 5700-class locomotives were even paired with Great Western-designed auto coaches, which enabled push-pull operations and eliminated the need for the locomotive to be turned around at the end of each journey. After the nationalisation of British Railways in 1948, the locomotives became part of British Railways' Western Region fleet. They continued to serve in shunting and local freight operations, maintaining their reputation for reliability and versatility. The Pannier tanks' robust design and ease of maintenance made them well suited to the post-war years, during which resources were often scarce. As the 1960s progressed, Steam locomotives began to be phased out in favour of diesel and electric engines. As a result, the pannier tanks, along with many other steam locomotives, gradually became obsolete. 16. Pannier tanks have been preserved, with several still in operational condition, thanks to the tireless efforts of dedicated railway enthusiasts and preservation societies. 
These locomotives can be found at various heritage railways and museums across the United Kingdom, such as the Seven Valley Railway, the South Devon Railway, and the National Railway Museum.